Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, it's that time of year again. Hop Slam is a 10% double IPA from Bell's Brewery in Comstock, Michigan. You know, it feels like this beer keeps coming out earlier and earlier every year, but I think what it is is that it's released so close to New Year's that once that holiday hits, it's like, bam! And there it is, on the shelf. Bell's has a bunch of highly anticipated beers every year, but I feel like for me, this is one that I look forward to every year because it's just so consistently released right at the beginning of January. Others will be kind of, you know, oh, it's going to come out this time, but this one's always in January, always at the beginning. And this will be the fifth year in a row that I'm reviewing this beer. Let's take a look at the label. We'll get it into a glass. But first, I'd like to thank my executive producers, Brian Kramer, David Jeffries, Vinnie Cat, and Cam Freeman for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help out the channel, or maybe just throw me a couple bucks to buy me a beer, take a look at my Patreon at patreon.drafttherapy.com, where you can get early access to these videos and a few other special perks that are available only to patrons. Let's take a look at the can. Hasn't changed, so it's not going to be that different. The big difference that you'll notice is this year they're back to cans. They must have a stockpile of cans because last year it was bottles. On the top, we look at it. It's a green can. Let's get that out of the way. It's very green. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit darker of a green than it has been in years past, but that's just, I'm just positing that on this. So on the top of the can, we see the bells, the three bells. It says Hop Slam Ale. It has the three hop cones crushing a guy. Been the same design, I think, since the beginning of when it came out the first time. And it has this little burst of light behind them on the bottom. It says Double India Pale Ale Brewed with Honey. If we turn it to the side, it has the government warning. Above that, it says Brewed and Canned by Bell's Brewery Incorporated in Comstock, Michigan. And then at the bottom, it says Alcohol 10% by Volume, Shelf Life 3 Months. This one, it was canned. Uh, it looks like January 4th, 2022. So I'm doing this review on the 8th. So this came out, this was actually canned four, four days ago. The thing that I thought was interesting is that on the box that it comes in, it said this on the Low Sun uh, box as well, or the pack that you get it on. It says 100% uh, independent and family owned. I'm sure that they printed these out way before they knew that they were going to be selling or whatnot. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a whole different story. I don't really have anything really to add that hasn't already been said. So we're going to use a Draft Therapy Tiku glass on this one. Gonna crack it and put a nose on it because that's what we do around here. So let's do that. And getting the aroma, the notes. Hmm. Not really getting a good, hmm. Not really getting much of a whiff here. I'm picking up on something, but I don't know exactly what the aroma is. Let's go ahead and pour it and then we'll talk about it. So it's coming out really orange. It comes out in that nice kind of orangey color. Very clear looking. This is not to be confused with a New England style IPA whatsoever. This is a double IPA. And we're getting all that, uh, we're getting that pour right down the center there. Getting that, getting aggressive on it. And we're looking at about three fingers of head. That's pretty much dead on three, three fingers. Looking at the head from the overhead, uh, it is nice. It has some larger bubbles, compact. The color on it is a bit, it's off white. It's shading kind of towards an orangey copper, but it's pretty close to white. And let's hold it up here. And as you can see through that, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see me there. It looks very coppery. And I don't know if that's necessarily, it, what you guys are seeing, it looks very copper. I don't know if that's from the lighting on the background. To me, it also looks pretty copper. It looks a little bit of an orangey kind of color. There is a lot of uh, bubbles kind of, going up from the bottom, the carbonation. It looks like what I remember it being, it's not, uh, this is obviously not gonna be hazy. So you can probably see me pretty well through that. And uh, let's put a nose on the glass. I'm getting a little bit different of, a, of an aroma on this one now, on the glass. Now it's starting to come out. I'm getting a little bit of that citrusy kind of note on the head a little bit, there's a little bit of a, there's a sweetness in there and I was smelling that out of the can too, but I'm again, I'm not able to put my finger on exactly what that sweetness, maybe like a caramel kind of aroma. It smells a little bit sweeter than I generally remember it smelling. I'm gonna pour the rest in there and uh, let's go ahead and try it out. Cheers. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the mouthfeel first. 
We always start with the mouthfeel. It's a little bit heavier. It's a little, got a little bit of a, almost, it's starting to, it feels like it's kind of edging towards being almost thick. It's kind of in that medium category. It's really nicely set in that medium ca category, but it is on the higher end of medium. I don't remember it being quite as kind of viscous as, as it is this time in years past. Let's talk about the flavor. So I'm getting, very, it's very sweet. I'm getting a lot of that honey kind of flavor up front. Then after that, there's a bit of a citrusy sweetness, but it's so kind of leaning towards that honey flavor. So you get to that citrusy kind of sweetness. There is a bit of a bitterness to it, obviously. It's double IPA. It has little bits of a citrus bitterness, that hoppy citrus bitterness, but there's a bit of a piney in there too. But the heaviest flavor that I'm getting is that sweet characteristic right up front. That honey is pretty strong in there, but it's not all just the honey. There's a bit of a malty sweetness, maltier, a lot more malty sweetness than I remember in years past. And then that kind of, the bitterness seems really on the low scale this year. As I take a really big swig of it, I'm getting a lot, again, a lot of that sweetness. Now I'm picking up a little bit more on the citrus note, on the piney note, but the malty sweetness, the, the honey, it's almost more malty sweetness than it is honey. So it's kind of throwing me off a little bit because I feel like this year's beer is the most drastic change of pace that we've seen for the last couple of years. The last couple of years seem like it's been pretty consistent. You know, again, you get that sweetness, that honey sweetness, you get that maltiness, and then you get the bitterness you know, the citrus and the, and the piney bitterness. So it's not like this huge diversion. It's not this, you know, detour into this other kind of beer. It's still hop slam, but it feels like it tastes like it's not quite as bitter as it has been in years past. And the sweetness is, is kind of amped up, pumped up a little bit more than we've had previously. This year's again, the bitterness comes through, but it's more on the finish. It's more on the back of your tongue. It's more as your tongue kind of dries out from it just kind of hanging out and, you know, in between sips or whatnot. It still doesn't taste boozy. It still doesn't taste like it's a high ABV beer. It is 10%, or at least that's what it says on the label. It doesn't have that kind of kick to it like it's had in years past. And not to say that it's been overly boozy in years past, but I feel like there has been a little bit more of an element of booziness to it. This goes down really smooth, and that's not a, that's not a complaint. That's not in the con side. That's, that's in the pro side to be at very being even smoother than years past, and years past have been smooth too. But this year, I feel like it's even smoother than it has been in general. And I think that bitterness feels like it's been kind of dialed down a little bit. And that's what's lending to more of that smoothness. It's just very sweet. Again, it's got a lot of that malty sweetness, that honey sweetness. I get on this third drink now, this bigger drink, this third big drink, I'm getting more of that citrus. I'm getting a little bit more of the bitterness on the finish but it still is a very, um, has a lot of lingering bitterness on the back of your tongue, on the end of the swallow. I have a couple of years now of, of Hop Slam that I've been kind of collecting, and I know after a while the hoppiness really falls out of it. It turns almost into like this really kind of even barley wine, like a really nice barley wine. And if you are interested in me going through a couple of years, not just, I've done two years in the past. I've done like a vertical of Hop Slam. If you want to see like a longer one, uh, you know, of more years. I think I have a few years. I want to say like four. I might have all five of those years in somewhere around here, somewhere I can find them. But if you're interested in seeing that, let me know and we'll figure that out. But I think this year is, is a lot sweeter than years past. And I feel like, again, that hoppiness has been dialed down. That bitterness has been dialed down. Still extremely dangerous, still very smooth, but just kind of missing something that Hop Slam always seems to have. And I, you know, Hops change every year. They don't, they're not always the same every year. The oils might be different. The, the acids may be different. So it will change year to year. But I feel like this year is, is a little bit less kind of like it's just been dialed down, like I've said a couple times now, than it has been in years past. All right, friends, that has been Hop Slam from Bell's Brewery 2022. This is the last time this beer will be made by a truly independent brewery. So do you think we'll see more changes in the future? Or is this going to be a beer that you'll continue to look for year to year? Does, the, does it not being an independent brewery anymore even matter to you? Let me know in the comments down below. If you also want to see like a vertical of several years, let me know about that in the comments down below. If you like beer, 
You might want to subscribe and click that bell. I'm here talking about beer twice a week. It's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed. You might be able to avoid a clunker if you're a subscriber. You might think I'm totally off base and crazy, but you won't know any of that unless you're subscribed. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are, west side of the state, east side of the state, north, south, any other state, as long as it's local to you, go ahead and keep supporting those guys. And until next time, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Cheers.